Good morning. Good Chicles, the country church, Marion, Texas. A short drive to worship the Lord in a relaxed atmosphere. Yesterday was different. Yeah, I was headed, going to head to New Braunfels, and I was on 3009. So I was going to eat on the way to save some time. And so I pulled up the go Lane, and and a uh, young lady came on. She said, can I help you? And I said, yes, ma'am, I'd like a, a poor boy and french fries. She said, I beg your pardon? And so I got a little closer, and I said, I'd like a poor boy and some french fries. She said, wait just a second. The man came on, and he said, can I help you? I said, I'd like a poor boy and some french fries. He said, this is Taco Cabana, Bill Billers is next door. <laughs> now the reason I'm telling you all that is it doesn't hurt as bad when I say it. But if somebody comes up and said, you know, I saw the preacher in ta Taco Cabana's drive through ordering a Bill Miller's. So now I got that one off my chest. So then I go to get a shot in my knee. And I go in your brothels, and uh, you all know me to be a very patient and understanding individual. But I waited for one hour. One hour. Huh? I was ahead of you? No, you're a better man than me. Oh, <laughs> well, well, wait till I get through the story, and we'll see. <laughs> and uh, they'd set me in there, and they said, we'll be right back. Now, I don't know what right back is, but it wasn't quick enough for me. And then the next one come in and said, well, uh, so-and-so will be in in just a minute. I'll be right back. I said, okay. This went on and on and on. And isn't there a song, I could feel my temperature rising? <laughs> anyway, if there's not, they ought to be one, and I'd have been singing it. So finally, I, I talked to Dr. Starch, who's a Christian, so I talked to him in a Christian tone. <laughs> Told him I loved Jesus, but I didn't love him anymore if he couldn't get me in any quicker. And he said, what time? He said, you got here late. I said, my appointment was at 3, and I was here before 3. He said, you should have been here by 2. <laughs> so anyway, he just, we're going back and forth. So he leaves. And I get this little intern, and uh, he was something else. He said, uh, just jump up here on the table. I said, Sonny, if I could jump up on the table, I wouldn't be here in the first place. All I want from you is to stick a needle in my knee. And he did, all the way through to the, no. <laughs> but you ought not make you know, sarcastic remarks to somebody that's got a big needle in their hand, you know. So anyway, but it's going to get better. It's going to get better. So I know the knee feels a whole lot better. I'm starting to leap tall buildings, but not with a single bound yet. It, I have to jump a little bit. Well, I got that all out of my system. Turn in your Bibles to Nehemiah 8. Ezra, Nehemiah. I can go 1st Samuel, 1st Kings, 1st Chronicles, Ezra, Nehemiah. The 8th chapter. Beginning at verse 6. Those who can, if you will, stand in honor of the word. You'll be glad you did after you read the scripture. Verse 6 says... And Ezra blessed the Lord, the great God. And all the people answered, Amen, Amen, with lifting up their hands. And they bowed their heads. And they worshipped the Lord with their faces to the ground. Now at verse 8. So they read in the book in the law of God distinctly. And gave the sense and caused them to understand the reading. And Nehemiah, which is the Tirshathal, 
And Ezra the priest, the scribe, and the Levites that taught the people said unto all the people, This day is holy unto the Lord your God. Mourn not, nor weep. For all the people wept when they heard the words of the law. And he said unto them, Go your way, eat the fat, and drink the sweet. Send portions unto them for whom nothing is prepared. For this day is holy unto our Lord. Neither be you sorry, for the joy of the Lord is your strength. So the Levites stilled all the people, saying, Hold your peace, for the day is holy. Neither be ye grieved. And all the people went their way to eat and to drink and to send portions and to make great myrrh, because they had understood the words that were declared unto them. Now in 2 Timothy, get over into the New Testament and the fourth chapter and the first four verses, Paul is writing to young Timothy and to us. And he said, I charge thee therefore before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall judge the quick and the dead at his appearing and his kingdom. Preach the word, be instant in, okay, in season out of season, reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long-suffering and doctrine. For the time will come will they will not endure sound doctrine. But after their own lust shall they heap in themselves teachers having itching ears. And they shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned unto fables. Paul tells Timothy, let me let you all sit down now, I guess. <laughs> uh, Paul tells Timothy very simply to preach the word. That's pretty simple, isn't it? Pretty direct. It sounds like it ought to be something that's easy to do. But we need to remember that the devil always attacks the word. You believe that? Yes, sir. And the church that preaches the word and the preacher that preaches the word. I think of the temptation there's out there, and to be honest, not to preach the word. Because you see some people building up some mighty strong numbers without preaching the word of God. But there's a difference between building up numbers and building up the Lord and glorifying the Lord. So this passage is a blessing. It causes us to think and it causes us to consider. And that's what we want to do tonight. Consider the worship in verse 6. Ezra blessed the Lord, the great God, and all the people answered, Amen, Amen, with lifting up their hands, and they bowed their heads and worshiped the Lord with their faces to the ground. I love the freedom that we have to worship here. I do. Notice they praised the Lord, and the people were all in agreement, and they were, Amen. Amen. And they lifted their hands and they bowed their heads and they worshiped the Lord with their faces to the ground. So they had the freedom to praise, but they had humility in their heart. When they raised their hands, they didn't, it wasn't for you to see how many diamonds they have on each hand. And I've been in some churches, and David knows what I'm talking about, where I've seen some raise their hand like, you see that? Because <laughs> if you don't see that, I'll lift it a little bit higher. Raising your hands is not to show off your rings. Raising your hands is to give glory to the Lord. Well, it was an open, honest worship. It was pure 
And, and it came about from the reading of the Word of God. And so we have to consider that in worship. When we worship the Lord, is it a pure worship? Does it stem from what we read and what we understand in the Word about worship? But also consider the Word. Verse 8 says, So they read in the book in the law of God distinctly and gave the sense and caused them to understand the reading. They read the Word of God. They rightly divided the Word. In other words, we read that in the New Testament, don't we? But they read distinctly. And I noticed as I was studying that distinctly, the word distinctly is only used one time in the whole Bible. And it's used right here. They read the Word of God distinctly and, and uh, they gave the sense of it. In other words, they explained it. And they showed the people what the Word had to say and cause them to understand. You ever been to a church that when the guy got through, you never you didn't have a clue as to what he actually said? You know, here, they gave the sense of it. They explained it and caused people to understand. Now, that's, that's the way that we're to teach. And that's the way that we're to preach. The late, and I think the great, J. Vernon McGee used to always say, put the cookies on the bottom shelf where the kids can get a hold of them. You know, that the Lord wants us to feed his sheep. He doesn't say anything about feeding his giraffes. But uh, a lot of times preachers come into a church and they've got to show all the other preachers in the land how deep that they are. You know. But the Lord wants it understood that we give the Word of God distinctly. That's the way to, we're, we're to teach, and that's the way we're to preach. And we're to be faithful to that, and not necessarily fancy. Verse 9, he says, Consider, consider the day. This day is holy unto the Lord your God. Mourn not, nor weep, for all the people wept when they heard the words of the law. This day is holy unto the Lord. What, what day do you suppose it was? Well, I'm not going to argue that, because I thought of Psalms 118.24, this is the day which the Lord hath made. We'll rejoice and be glad in it. I'm to remember that. When that little old fellow tells me to jump up on this table, I have to realize this is a day. When Taco Cabana and Bill Miller's got their driveways mixed up, I need to, need to remember that. Don't mourn, don't weep. If you read the Word of God and God convicts, it can and will lead us to repentance. But after that, get up. Get going. Get going for the Lord. Don't wallow in it. Allow God's Word to work a change. Now, Brother Neil and I... Uh, knew a man named uh, Bill Wiggins. And Bill was the last person to run the Roundup on Pat Booker Road. And somebody led Bill to the Lord. He didn't even go back for the receipts. He locked that door up and left. And Bill took it upon his heart to talk to everybody knew about the Lord. And he'd go in the jails and preaching, and he'd go in the rescue missions wherever. And somebody said, well, you know, a lot of people don't want to listen to that. 
And the guy that I was with said, have you ever seen Bill's fingers? About that big around. He said, they'll listen to Bill. And, uh, but Bill was, uh, he was quite a guy and would witness, visit anybody there. But he tells a story about when he was a boy that he said they were as poor as a church mouse. And uh, his mother found a garage sale and uh, bought him a raccoon skin coat. But he didn't have any shoes. And he had a little brother, and he said it was cold as blue blazes. And uh, the grass across the football field had frozen. And so he had his little brother on his back, and he put his feet in the pockets, and he started off across that football field. And he got halfway across it, and his feet hurt so bad he couldn't stand it. So he sat down with his little brother on his back and started crying. And little brothers are very understanding too. He said, Bill, I know it hurts and I know you got to cry. But get up and keep walking or we're not going to make it. And sometimes that's what we do. We have a little pain in our life. Had a guy come today and he said, I've had some pain and suffering, he said, but I have to get back in church. And I said, well, praise the Lord for that. And uh, so, good Lord willing, he's going to be here Sunday. And, uh, uh, but sometimes when things are hurting, we just got to keep walking. We've got to keep walking. Well, get up, get going. For the Lord, don't wallow in it. Allow God's word to work a change. And consider your attitude. Now here we go, verse 9 again. Mourn not, nor weep, for all the people wept when they heard the words of the law. And you know, really, we need to have an attitude check. And to check our attitude, my attitude, you need to check your attitude toward the things of the law, of the Lord. What is your attitude to the things of the Lord? You know, let's, let's talk about his services. You know, Hebrews 10.25 says, Not forsaking the assembling of yourselves, as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another. And so much the more as you see the day approaching. You know, when we were on shutdown, I I realized just how important this assembling with the saints really is. I miss being here. And I began to understand what the scripture says how important this assembling with the saints is. Now I'm praising the Lord that we can meet. Amen. And the book of Acts says that they met daily. That's the fellowship that they desired. So consider your attitude to the things of God and then consider his word. Chapter 8, verse 3 And he read therein before the street that was before the water gate from the morning until midday before the men and the women and those that could understand and the ears of all the people were attentive unto the book of the law. Half a day. Half a day. We get upset if Rusty preaches 45 minutes over (laughs) Uh, but isn't isn't it funny somebody goes a little bit over and uh, what are we going to do rush home to catch the latest series on Hulu you know Uh, I think of a lady at Eisenhower Road when I was in evangelism I think Ruth and 
Phil said they knew her. But it, she was Miss Hoity Toity, I think, something along that line. And she had a wonderful fur, fur coat and she had a couple of those jewels on her fingers. And they hadn't had the word, they hadn't had somebody preach there in a long time. Just preached a simple message and I think we had 12 people saved and the church added unto. And a lot of people were really excited about that. But this lady came up to me afterwards and she said, Pastor, what I'm going to do is I'm going to buy, pay for myself. I'm going to put a clock on the back wall so you'll know when it's time to stop. I said, will you do that? She said, yes. I said, good, because next Sunday I'm going to announce that if somebody wants to be saved, you better do it in a hurry because Sister So-and-So wants me out of here by 12. I don't know if they got a clock yet, but they didn't then. <laughs> but uh, the idea, you know, I, want, I, I said, ma'am, I want to get to Luby's as quick as anybody else. But if people are being saved, I'm going to stay here till the cows come home, you know. Anyway, there are people that are concerned about the time there, but not about the Lord's house, the Lord's word, and the Lord's message. Well, half a day, these people stood. If, I, if that would have been me, I was Ezra or Nehemiah or some, I couldn't have stood up that long myself. So I'd have let them off light, I guess, but uh, half a day. And then I need to spend more time in the Word, you know. Had a secretary in a former church, Rusty, that somebody asked, Brother Butch, busy? No, he's just studying. <laughs> just studying. You know, I never told Joni to get out of the kitchen earlier. <laughs> the longer she stayed in there, the better it was for me. And uh, when she said he's just studying, I wanted to say, Jesus is in here with me. <laughs> and he's talking to me through his word, and, and I'm just going to hunker down and listen to him. What's your attitude to his word? And what about prayer? You know, I got so much repenting to do. We had a staff meeting, and I said, come on, come on, let's get on. Uh, let's hurry up and pray. No sooner did I get that out of my mouth that I realized what I'd said. Let's hurry up and pray. Because that's such a little thing here. We need to get that thing. No. The later we are, the more that we got to discuss, the longer we ought to pray. Well, I just had a prayer then it said Father forgive me what about singing to the Lord we need to think about our attitude to that and when we sing we ought to cut loose well I, I don't like to sing out the, this who cares what you don't like <laughs> Sing, Mildred, sing, you know. Well, we need to think of our attitude toward the things of God. I don't think you could run fast enough to give me David's job because he sings the grand old hymns and somebody says, Listen, we're getting behind. We need to sing the songs that they're singing now. What do you call it, Rusty? Okay. Yeah. And then, then he'll sing modern songs. Or, 
Darren Poodle never going to know what the grand old hymns were if he doesn't sing more of them. I get in on it. If he's not singing Southern Gospel, then I you know, say, you got to get that in there. But when everybody's got something to say, that means he's doing his job. You know, somebody said, what are you going to do if Dave leaves us? I said, nothing, I'm going with him. <laughs> so, sing, yep, you'll have me. But singing to the Lord, we need to think of our attitude toward the things of God. And uh, consider the message. Consider the message of those songs. Now, if it's talking about a bullfrog and he's cross-eyed and this and that, then, uh, you know, don't worry about it. Or like the little kid that come home and uh, his mother said, what'd y'all do? And he said, we sang. She said, what'd you sing about? And he said, we sang about a bear. You sang about a bear in Sunday school? Yeah. Bear's name was Gladly. And he said, well, how'd the song go? And it said, is Gladly the cross-eyed bear? So, but we need, but, but we need to consider our attitude when we're singing, and to see what the words say, and if and if that's what it's about, then I don't blame you for not singing. But I hear the same songs, and they got a message, and Dave makes sure they got a message. And, uh, you know, we need to, this may not be my cup of tea, but giving the Lord glory ought to be. Well, verse 10 says, consider the joy, the last part of verse 10. Neither be your sorry, for the joy of the Lord is your strength. You think maybe why you don't have any strength is you don't have the joy of the Lord? The joy of the Lord, the Bible says, is our strength. You ought to be able to draw a circle, get in that circle and have a spell all by yourself. The joy of the Lord is our strength. I use this in Bob's home going. When I talked about that, one thing he did is he had a smile on his face all the time. He had cancer, he had this and that, but he had the joy of the Lord in his heart. And the joy of the Lord was his strength. We need to chew on that a minute. Because the Bible says that Happiness or joy is a healer. You know, I had a doctor, uh, had a wellness clinic, and he asked me to speak to all the people about the power of prayer and the power of joy in healing. They say happy people heal faster. You got a positive attitude. I guess it's why it takes me so long to get over something. <laughs> but it should make a difference. <laughs> yeah. And then consider the peace verse 11 speaks about. Grace and peace. You know, wherever you see that in the Word of God, that uh, grace always comes before peace. In other words... If you've not experienced the grace with God, you're not going to get the peace of God. You've got to know Him personally as Savior and Lord. Well, we can have peace in the midst of turmoil. Now, I like what Dave said, we've got turmoil. But we can have peace in the midst of the turmoil. Yes. I love talking to children a lot of times when they've asked the Lord to come into your heart. 
in their heart. And, and, and I, I say, can anybody take him from your heart? And they say, no. And I said, why is that? And they said, because he's more powerful than anybody. They've experienced the grace of the Lord, and they have that peace in the Lord. You know, that's why we talk about a childlike faith. You know, when my kids were little, I'd set them up on something. Joan would worry about it, and I'd say, come here and jump to Dad. You better be ready because they're sailing through the air. You know. And, and Keith, why don't you come up here tonight? Let's try that again. <laughs> now, because now he's not launching out by faith like he used to. He's, he's got a computer. And so uh, he, he's figuring everything out. What are the chances of him dropping me? I mean, his knees are shot, and I'll break my nose, and so on and so forth. And, uh, you know, because he's not, he's not leaping out by faith. And sometimes that's what we do. We walk by sight and not by faith, not trust in the Lord. He's not going to drop you. He's not going to drop you. Well, consider the comprehension. In verse 12, it says, They made great myrrh, they were mirth, they were happy, because they had understood the words that were declared unto them. Because they had understood the words that were declared unto them. We sing a song, make the message clear and plain, that Christ receiveth sinful men. This is them. They, they understood the words that were declared unto them. You know, it's amazing when somebody's saved and the Holy Spirit lives within them, how much difference the Word, how much more the, the Word reveals to them because they have the Holy Spirit as a teacher and as a guide. Unbelievable. So we consider the compre comprehension that we understand the words that were declared unto them. So tonight we have an invitation, we have an altar call, because we never take it for granted that everybody's saved. Never. And if you are, praise the Lord. But I would sure hate to stand before the Lord and not and take it for granted that everybody was saved. The man that came in today, he is a member and had was raised in a in a pretty strong church. And I wanted to assume that he was saved. You know, you can't assume anything. You know. And when I started talking to him, uh, he said he didn't know whether he was saved or not. And so <clears throat> we need to make sure that people understand what the Word of God says. Just like Ezra, just like Nehemiah shared with the people of God. You know, they had found the Bible. They had found the Word of God. And uh, What I was thinking is we need to find the Word of God. <clears throat> we probably got more Bibles laying around. I, I, I don't even know how many I've got. Joan and I, I don't know how many we've got personally. But we got a lot. Not enough. Yep. And the uh, finest gift you can give somebody is a good study Bible. You know. So tonight, if you don't know the Lord, you can come to know Him. We'll pray with you. 
you can find Jesus sweet to your soul. And if you're already saved and want to identify with Him, want to plant your life in the life of His church, this will be the time to do it. Altar will be open. Invitation will be given. And we trust that God will be glorified. Let's stand and pray. Father, we do thank you tonight. We thank you for your word. We certainly thank you for your presence. That, Father, that you'll take the word. You'll deal with us exactly where we're at. And lead us to where we need to be. And so even tonight as we give over to His Spirit and to His Word and people think about the decisions that they need to make. And Father, I pray that You'd give them the courage to step out, let go, let You have Your wonderful way. For we ask it in Jesus' name and for His sake. Amen. On that first verse, will you come? Just as I am without Just like you one are. plea, but that thy blood You're trusting was him. shed for me. Lord, I'm believing your word. And that thou beats me come. Would you bow your heads? Instruments continuing to play. I don't know the need of any heart, but I have a Savior that knows the need of every heart. And so right now we give Him glory. We give Him praise. We pray that He's got access to every heart and life in this building. And so, Lord, we're trusting you. And in just a moment, we sing one other verse. If no one comes, Father, we'll close your invitation. So, Father, stir people's hearts, we pray. In Jesus' name, as we sing. Just as I am. Just like we are. He's broken every barrier down. Listen, what we're singing. 
Yes, thine, thine alone, alone o Lamb of, of God, God I come. come. I come. Thank you, and you may be seated. You know, I think that a lot of times I get jealous of different things. You know, and I think about that, but nobody gets as jealous as the Lord. He wants us all to himself. Amen. Thank you. Tonight, Virginia Sanchez comes and rededicating her, rededicating her life. And sometimes we don't know what that is, but there was a time that I rededicated my life and I realized you can't rededicate something you never dedicated in the first place. And so I had to get my salvation straight and thank the Lord for it. And Dustin and Melissa Engelke come tonight. They've accepted the Lord. They've been saved. But they want to get their baptism on the right side of their salvation. And praise the Lord for that. They got a precious daughter that we baptized last Sunday. And I like that, you know. Uh, I, th I, think I, I thank the Lord for children that set an example, not only for other children, but also for us. And I love to see some old hardened, sorry drunk find the Lord. <laughs> I, I, I do. But the thing of it is, I don't want to be derelict of, of, of omitting a child, you know, because a little child shall lead them. We come in simple childlike faith. So we need to praise the Lord for the children, too, that, that are saved, because look how long they've got to live for the Lord. Amen. I mean, welcome. Y'all are welcome. Look at that, Rusty. <laughs> oh, I just, I, I love the, what we've got here. I'm not touching that <laughs> one bit. Let's have a word of prayer. Robert, how about you dismiss us? Good to be back. Uh, I've been MIA for a couple months, been in Houston, and it's good to see friendly faces. It's good to hear uh, the worship, worshiping the King of Glory. And it's good to hear the Word preached. This section of Nehemiah is so much about celebration, about, man, when we're celebrating, Lord, we celebrate you standing to midday is no deal at all. Thank you for our pastor who's broken your word to us tonight, Lord, and convicted us of knowing about our attitudes in worship and in prayer and the reading of the word, the comprehension of the word, and the fellowship of the church, the local body. Lord, I... I I thank you for this church. I thank you for its leadership, and I thank you, Lord, for its members, and I ask you to bless each and every one of them as they move out tonight to go and celebrate the King of glory every day. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you. We were going to have our uh, choirs going to meet for a socially distanced rehearsal right down here, so uh, we'll see you Sunday, and choir will meet right up right up front.